there guys, welcome to the channel, Talking with Jay Spring. I'm your host Jay, giving you a video on the channel today. Hello there guys and welcome to my first ever spoiler review on the channel. This is for the Avengers Endgame, obviously you went to go and see that. Done a non-spoiler review already, so if you haven't seen the movie, don't check further out in this video. Because you don't, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Go ahead and check out that non-spoiler review, link in the description, annotation at the end of the video. Or a card above my head, you can click on that and take you straight to that non-spoiler review right now but guys without further ado if you enjoyed the spoiler review smash the thumbs up comment your thoughts down below and what you enjoyed about the movies all spoilers are allowed down below because this is a spoiler review and don't forget as well if you're new here consider subscribing and hitting that bell for much much more i want to thank everybody who supported my youtube channel and also the youtube series journey to avengers endgame you made it so worthwhile so fun for me to make these videos for you reviewing from iron man 1 up until the end with a bunch of bonus videos on the channel we've still got a lot more to come when it comes to the mc MCU, superhero stuff and everything, so stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss it. So guys, this review is going to be very different to my normal reviews, cutting out all the facts and giving straight opinions. I want you to leave your opinions on the movie or the characters or anything in general down below. Let's get into a great conversation. Let's get straight into this. Now, a character I want to talk about is Nebula because I felt she had a very special showing in this movie. I definitely enjoyed her character throughout this movie. Got shown when she, especially when she met a double in the past and stuff like that, going back in time. I really enjoyed that aspect of it, especially seeing the desperation, the emotion, and everything coming through in the beginning of the movie for Nebula. I think they've done a great job with this character. Another one being War Machine as well. I said on my non spoiler review, if you haven't seen it already, I mentioned about people getting shown the spotlight which haven't normally. War Machine was definitely one of them. Really enjoyed him in this movie. I got to feel a different side of him as well as he was sort of pushed in some moments of this movie. The spotlight as mentioned. I really did enjoy him as a whole. Next up we have Rocket as well. Rocket I was quite disappointed with. Now he had some humorous lines in this movie. He could be quite repetitive. I don't think this was the best shown of Rocket. He had some badass moments, some funny moments. But I expected a bit more because obviously what we've seen from him in the past. Another one as well which I'm very disappointed in when it comes to showing is the main, ver main person in 4. I think 4 was disappointing when it comes to the second half of the movie because I think they overused this gimmick, this character obviously, him being fat and lost because he's lost his family and his friends and everything. I understand what they did, I just felt that they overused it and it sort of made me a bit annoyed throughout the movie because he's one of my favourite characters and I'm sure a lot of people who love 4 will feel the same. I do enjoyed the beginning bit when he was obviously skinny and obviously the 4 that we know and love and he chopped off Thanos' head. I really enjoyed that side of 4 but we're going to go straight into some of the scenes now anyway talking about my favourite scenes for the movie that I wanted to take notice of. First off, we start with the opening scene. Before even the opening titles even happened, we have this emotional opening scene, obviously, with Hawkeye and his family, his daughter. It, it just, it's pure emotion. It started off the movie, I was in tears to start the movie off. It set the emotion perfectly. I think the Russo's done a great job with this scene. Couldn't have done it any better, in my opinion. Next up, another thing I wanted to take notice of is Tony Stark being skinny. The CGI was just done amazingly. I really think they've done a great job with that. And I think... Another thing with Tony Stark as well, showing his scared character in the beginning, obviously being rescued down with Nebula, obviously Captain Marvel saves them. I think that was done, portrayed very well, as well as the scared side of Tony Stark. We used to him being this cocky, funny, confident character, but we really got to see a scared side of him. He didn't want to go against Thanos again because of what happened. He didn't want to risk anybody else's life because of what happened. I really enjoyed that. Still having that anger towards Captain America as well, obviously, because they said we'll lose together too. Obviously, Captain America wasn't there when everything happened up there with Tony Stark and he still, he feels that sort of anger and I think they've done so well when it comes to the Tony Stark character as a whole. As another thing I want to talk about is the first attack on Thanos. I think it was done epically. They couldn't have done anything better with this scene in my personal opinion. They chose the best character to kill Thanos first time and that was Thor. If you've seen my video of obviously who will kill Thanos, Thor is at the top of my list. I think he definitely deserves revenge for obviously the death of Heimdall and the death of Loki. Mainly Loki of course Obviously, everybody's going to feel about that. But I think this scene, the way they all teamed up, the way that Captain Marvel was used in this scene, the way that Thanos looked weak compared to Infinity War, obviously being retired, and that twist, obviously, of the Infinity Stones being destroyed by Thanos himself. This left, the obviously, everybody devastated. They felt that they couldn't get everybody back. And I just think this scene was done to perfection, to set off the movie, then left me questioning, after that, what was next? Who Thanos is dead. What are they going to do? Well, obviously, time travel skipped out of my mind during this movie because I was so blown away with what I was seeing. Then Ronin comes onto the scene. He starts kicking ass, killing people, slicing people up, being the bad guy in the movie. I'm thinking, 
wait, is Ronin going to be the bad guy in the movie? I'm all down for it, of course, but I didn't expect this. I was so shocked. I was literally, didn't, I was questioning throughout that part of the movie. I was like, what is going to go on? Now, I was so, I was just so impressed with what they'd done with this first half of the movie, which everybody questioned being it pacey, slow paced, and, and questioned it. That's why I had to be, include that into my non-spoiler review but it wasn't a problem for me i absolutely loved what i was seeing it was so unpredictable and just so great next we go on to ant-man coming back from the quantum realm i think they've done that perfectly i really enjoyed the fact of ant-man in this movie i think he was a key character we got to see the dramatic performance from him than we usually see normally just a comedy we got to see that as well but we got to see really dramatic obviously him meeting his daughter all grown up he's missed a certain part of her life yet again obviously he missed part of her before if you remember right he was in and out of prison and stuff he hasn't really been there for her. And now he's seen her all grown up. And he's missed that. And the tears, honestly, were just in my eyes. I couldn't stop crying throughout this movie. And this was one of the scenes. Just imagine going, being stuck in time. And you it feels to you like an hour. But you've missed five years of that person. Your daughter, your son, growing up. Wow, it just brought tears to my eyes straight away. Another person I want to talk about is Professor Hulk. Now, a lot of people have a mixed opinion on this. This ain't the Hulk they want destroying things and stuff, which I agree with. But I also really think this was the best Mark Ruffalo Hulk. I really enjoyed Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk, but never really enjoyed his Bruce Banner side. Now, I think this really was the best showing of both of them together. I really thought this brought some sort of freshness to the Hulk, and I think it was well-deserved. This was a shock which everybody wanted. Everybody wanted Professor Hulk, but now some people were even moaning about it, which I disagree with. I think, honestly, when it comes to Mark Ruffalo, this is the best Hulk so far from him. Next up I want to talk about is the time travel aspect of things. I felt it was used very well compared to most movies. If you think about time travel, I felt they used this to store whole story, the way they did it. Everything come together and especially the way they separated people into groups. Yet again, I think that makes the movie flow a lot better and how they encounter either themselves or people they love or people they hate and how they get the stones before Thanos does. I think it all tied together and done a great job with the whole time travel aspect. Another thing I want to talk about is Black Widow's death scene. Now, this made me bawl my eyes out like a baby. I couldn't stop crying for literally for ages. Just the fact I was in pure shock. This was the shock of the movie. I couldn't believe my eyes. Now, when I see there was a group of three, there was a group of four or three again, and there was a group of two with Ronin, obviously Hawkeye, and obviously Black Widow, I sort of felt something was going to happen to them, but I thought it was going to happen to Hawkeye. I felt like he was going to be the one that got killed off in this, in this film because, obviously, uh, the Hawkeye series coming out, I felt that maybe they would kill him off and they will prioritise the Black Widow movie. Didn't seem that way, it did seem that way, but didn't happen that way. So I think they've done a great job of keeping this on the hush-hush, and the way they've done it was absolutely great, showing this brotherly, sisterly love between them, them both fighting each other, who, who's going to die, and... The way it was done, it was just so emotional, so perfectionally done. I really, really enjoyed it. And then obviously, Hawkeye arriving back with everybody, with the Infinity Stones, and just everybody's face. You see Steve Rogers, you see the Hulk, you see even Hawkeye Ronan himself. It was emotional. I just couldn't stop crying. I think they've done so great with this as well. As the final battle, I wanted to definitely give a lot of depth when it comes to this because the final battle was just so well executed. We start off with the battle which I wanted to see, which you see in the trailers. You see Thor, Iron Man and Captain America going up to Thanos. That battle was badass. That moment completely shocked the hell out of me. A lot of people predicted it. A lot of people wanted it. Showing that Captain America was worthy of holding Thor's hammer. We see it move in that Age of Ultron movie. We didn't think he was going to be able to lift it at the end of that, obviously. And suddenly, in this movie, he lifts it. He's worthy. He's wanting it more than ever. He starts kicking ass, trying to destroy Thanos, obviously, before Thanos kills Thor. Uh, and it was just so well executed. And still, Thanos being shown to stand on top, even though this this happened, he was still showing how strong he was, one step ahead he was. He brings his army out, and I'm like, this is the moment, guys. Bring someone new through. Bring a Deadpool through. Bring the X-Men, the Fantastic Four. Even bring the old guys back through. They brung the old team back through with some new faces, which were shocking, which we're going to go through. I'm going to quickly give my opinion on as well. Um, but I do want to mention, before this scene, I was hearing people, like little kids next to me with their fathers and their mothers, and saying, 
dad and they're like it's Spider-Man in this movie I want Spider-Man and then suddenly we get that with this moment now I was gutted they didn't bring any new s surprises throughout this movie like Deadpools and X-Men and stuff like that but I'm glad they didn't now thinking about it I'm really glad they didn't they just brought back these people they bring back obviously Spider-Man great to see him back definitely set up well as well for Far From Home throughout this movie as well I must say they've done a great job with that at the end of the movie Doctor Strange Doctor Strange was great in this movie as well showing his powers off Black Panther with Okoye Shuri and the Wakanda army always great to see them Black Panther being one of my favourites The Wasp great seeing her in this movie you really get to see the struggle through Ant-Man through this movie really missing her as well and it was great to see her kick ass in this movie Gamora that was a character I'm a bit mixed on. I'm going to talk about afterwards. Groot, Drax, Star-Lord. Always great to see them. Obviously, a lot of people have mixed opinions when it comes to Star-Lord. Obviously, he was one of the reasons why Thanos is, did what he did in the beginning. Valkyrie. Now, Valkyrie is a special character. I'm so glad that she's the new queen of the new Asgard. The way they've done that was really good as well. I really do enjoy Valkyrie. She brings some sort of fresh new vibes to come when it comes to the MCU. I really do enjoy her. And I just think she's badass. We had Bucky and Falcon come back, which a lot of people were happy about. I must say, Falcon was used well in this battle. He was chopping people up with his wings and laying on people. He was killing it. He was, he was so cool. Then we have Scarlet Witch. I have to mention her as well. Going up against Thanos, she's like, Thanos is like, I don't even know who you are. I don't even remember you because, obviously, this is the Thanos from the past. Uh, before all that happened with Vision and she's like well you will know me and she starts crushing him and everything and she was just pure badass I really enjoyed Scarlet Witch in this movie one of the most powerful throughout the MCU of course and we have a surprise with Pepper Potts as the Iron Woman holy fucking shit where the fuck did they plan this where the fuck did they do this and execute this so perfectly her flying with all the other women and that whole women's segment of them going yeah we're gonna c come and have you Bastards and stuff like that. I thought that was executed perfectly. The women power segment, as well as Pepper flying with Iron Man and them connecting and fighting, it was just so done well. I couldn't, I didn't actually expect it to work when I first see it, but they done so well. And it was one of the most iconic things throughout this whole movie, including some of the deaths and stuff. Like that. I really do remember that. It's one of the most memorable. Next up, as I said, I wanted to talk a bit more about Gamora. So Gamora is the one thing apart from um, Thor's character which I'm sort of confused with. And that is the fact that Gamora's now got to re reconnect with the whole of the Guardians of the Galaxy again. Because this is past Gamora before she even met Star-Lord and all that. Which I think they sort of really ruined in a way for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Coming from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Which a lot of people hate on including myself because there's a lot of bad aspects to that movie. They really need the Guardians of the Galaxy back bigger than ever. And I don't know what they're going to do. I'm hoping they sort of just carry on. But I don't, it wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. So I'm a bit curious about that. And Gamora in this movie obviously was great. She was badass. But I'm just a bit curious about that aspect. Next up I want to talk about is the death of the film. Tony Stark being killed, Iron Man. This literally, I bawled my eyes out throughout the rest of the film because of this death. There was moments I stopped crying and then I started crying. I stopped crying I started crying. This, for me, more than anything, was the death I didn't want to see. I knew it was going to happen, but it had to happen. This was so hard for me to sit through and it's still quite hard for me to even talk about it because I love this character. I love this. I love Robert Downey Jr. I love the character. I love what he's done for the MCU. I am just so grateful we got to see this character in a film. I, I'm just so grateful for what he's done. It's going to be so weird not seeing him on a poster, his name on a poster, seeing his name around Avengers and Marvel. And This is going to be hard, and seeing who's going to replace him is even harder because they, someone needs to fill that spot because that is a big spot to fill. And then we go on to the funeral where I was bored my eyes out again. It was so executedly done perfectly. Uh, and I just love the fact that another thing, that sort of Easter egg, which nobody really noticed, they went through all the groups of the people crying and upset, obviously with Tony dying. But then you had that random kid. And I was questioning at first, and I thought back when I got home, that's the kid from Iron Man Three. They put them in there for a person now, for a reason. I think that maybe is the passing of the torch. Maybe he's going to be the new Iron Man or Iron Kid or whatever. Maybe, or maybe they just done it for a pure Easter egg reason. They just wanted to add him in there just. Because there was a lot of other people from the past and the present and the future in there and stuff like that. I don't know, but I was I felt that was a good addition to that. But then the next scene, guys, the next scene, oh, 
I literally, I just suddenly sort of calmed down because they showed all the others crying and stuff. Then the next scene with Happy and Tony's daughter. Oh my God, the tears run down my eyes. I ain't a father or anything, but I can connect with that and emotionally understand that. Happy connecting with Tony's daughter was just the most beautiful thing throughout this movie. Apart from the next thing, which is just as beautiful, but I'm going to talk about this because you really get to feel the connection that Happy had with Tony throughout the whole journey. He loved that guy to pieces, and I, they just really portrayed it so well and showed it on the screens perfectly. That's all I'm going to say about that, really. And the last scene I want to talk about is the Captain America part of the torch scene. Fantastically done well. We start off, obviously, with... Captain America having to return the stones, the ancient one mentioned to the Hulk, you need to put them back, otherwise it ruined that time, and it'll just basically fuck everything up pretty much. So you need to return the stones right at the right place and right time. Then to Captain America isn't coming back. They're trying to bring him back. So I'm thinking, what I would have done is not have him come back abo- at all, and it would have upset everybody, and it would have been a really emotional send-off. But they done it even better. They brung him back old, which shocked the living hell out of me. I was like, wow, what are they doing here? Then they chose the right person in Falcon who needs something for people to love him and boost him up to the top because he's so great on screen, which nobody really notices. And in Bucky, you've got a lovable character already. He's already been the Winter Soldier. Everybody's loved him. He's cool. He's badass. He's got this fate. He's got this silver arm and everything. He's badass. But Falcon hasn't really got that what he needs. And that him having the Captain America shield will give him that it'll give him that Captain America aura. Now questions over it obviously being how is Falcon gonna have the strength of Captain America, how he's gonna do that. I'm sure they're gonna address that hopefully in phase four. Maybe he doesn't have the strength. Maybe he just uses it in a cool way. I don't know. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they do with it. I think they chose the right person and are definitely having the flashback shown on screen. Peggy and uh, Steve dancing and some of the memories and obviously Steve talking as well with uh, Falcon, it was just pure emotional, very well send off, it was completely, I'm going to be honest, it was fucking awesome, that was the best send off they could have done for Captain America, and again, the send off for Tony Stark, Iron Man, I just wanted to go over quickly again, the way they done it, the way Tony had the Infinity Gauntlet on, and just, he just went at fighting perfectly again, there's another great send off for both of these iconic characters, as well as Black Widow, we got some free original sent off perfectly in this movie, I really enjoyed their send-offs now a couple shout outs i want to quickly give before we end this video i want to shout out to josh brolin as thanos in this movie obviously it's just, it's not his movie it's the avengers but he still come through and gave a great performance joe russo showing up in the movie great again love to see him in there obviously the russo brothers do like to make little cameos as well as stan lee showing up again in cameo a wonderful cameo lovely always to see stan lee rest in peace stan lee samuel jackson coming back at the end of the movie for tony's funeral I love seeing Samuel Jackson in an MCU movie. It just makes me hyped for the future. And I want to give some names, shout outs as well throughout this. We have Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Robert Redford, Rene Russo as Thor's mum, Tilda Swinton as the Asian one, Ancient One, Hayley Atwell as Peggy, Marissa Tomei as Aunt May, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, and Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer in the Ant Man series. I want to shout out all these big, big names that make this movie an even bigger blockbuster and was great to see these back in the MCU in this Avengers movie. Now, guys, if you haven't seen my non-spoiler review, I rate this movie a 9.5 out of 10, making this totally awesome. Of course, I just absolutely love this movie. This is by far one of the best movies in the MCU. You've got to check it out if you haven't already and you just decided to listen to all my spoilers. But guys, let me know, of course, in the comment section down below what you thought of the movie, what scenes I've missed out, what scenes you really enjoyed, characters you enjoyed or you didn't. Let's just have a great conversation down below. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe and hit the bell if you're new here for much, much more content when it comes to superhero stuff. You won't want to miss the stuff coming on this channel. So without further ado, guys, I've been me, you've been you, and I'll see you next time on Talking with Jay Springer.